Meet the dog man who became Saint Christopher. The dog faced race. We have ancient icons showing Saint Christopher, depicting him with a face of a dog, because that's what he looked like. There were races of humans with dog heads. Whether we like it or not, there are ancient depictions of this. Even Saint Andrew of Crete had written concerning this. He also wrote concerning Alexander the Great during his conquest towards the East, having come across various types of abominable races that were mixtures of humans with animals, what we would call Nephilim. This is an image from the ancient Psalter showing Jesus Christ among the dog-faced humans. One of them became Saint Christopher. Icons are a peculiarity of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Believers pray in front of them, venerate them. It's said that the icon is a pictorial expression and confirmation of spiritual reality. Bulgakov, a famed Eastern Orthodox Christian theologian, says, as we already know, for iconosity, authenticity of icons, a priestly pronouncement is necessary, which is its consecration. The depicted character as such reflects a prototype and is sanctified by it. Explaining the significance of icons, Archimandrite Raphael Carolin says that, quote, the task put before the icon is to transmit the inner character while simultaneously preserving the accuracy of persons and events, end quote. Other sources tell us that in order for the artist to paint icons, a special preparation is needed. It consists of prayer, fasting, and receiving a priestly blessing. Carolyn says that in the past, quote, icon painters prepared for their job as priests would for their service of the liturgy, end quote. This then is no laughing matter. Let's look at a couple of icons, which as consecrated are supposed to show us heavenly realities here on earth. Let's meet Saint Christopher. When encountering this saint's icons for the first time, even the most faithful Christian Eastern Orthodox believers rub their eyes to make sure they're not imagining things. This saint is sometimes shown with a dog's head and sometimes with a donkey's head. According to the story, the head should be that of a dog but despite the spiritual preparation and fasting and prayer, some artists painted him a little differently so that in some versions of the image he looks more like a mentally challenged donkey. Uh, but now, let's come to uh, what it's all about, you may wonder. We've got two types of explanations. The Christian Eastern Orthodox one is a type that is a little closer to reality. We found several accounts attempted to explain this according to one of the stories St. Christopher was so handsome that he could not stop women from making advances at him and tempting him. He then prayed to God to help him with this problem. God's solution was to give him a dog's head, and the women immediately ceased to try to romance him. Other stories that circulate include him belonging to a race of dog-headed people and speaking the dog-headed language. These are interesting stories, but there's another more realistic explanation. If you look for St. Christopher among the Roman Catholic saints, you will find that Roman Catholics never display him in such a way. Since this saint's canonization predates the Orthodox Catholic split, we wonder how it is that Roman Catholics never portray him as a dog-headed person. The most likely answer is due to an error in translation. The main story of the same came the saint St. Christopher came into the Greek world from Latin. In this story, the saint is described as a mighty warrior and a man whose appearance frightened entire armies. He was nicknamed Cananeos, meaning a man from the land of Canaan, referencing his ethnic background. The person translated this into Greek misread this nickname as Canineos, derived from the Latin canis, meaning dog, and probably thought it to be a part of his frightening appearance on the battlefield. Thus, this saint, 
through no fault of his own, took the appearance of a fairy tale character. Now, since this depiction was consecrated on icons according to the Eastern Orthodox teaching, we already saw that depiction confirms the heavenly reality, and as previously stated by Archimandrite Carolyn, these icons preserve accuracy of persons and events. As there is no act of deconsecration, at least not that we're aware of, and no Christian Eastern Orthodox authority has ever corrected this error, St. Christopher is stuck looking like something that came out of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. His depiction is such, as such was not a marginal occurrence, as some might think, as we encounter these icons and frescoes in every traditional Christian Eastern Orthodox area, and these images have been made for about 1,500 years now. Some still make them, meaning that there had to have been quite a few bishops who approved of these, either actively by consecrating them or silently by not correcting them. One reader expressed doubt in the genuineness of these images. This person requested I provide specific locations where the icons could be found, and in response, the collection below started. Icons located, unfortunately, were not able to confirm the current location of some of the icons, but updated listing information can be available. You'll find it in the internet. I'll leave a link below for you. This icon has uh, quite a number of Eastern Kindly support by contributing to my Patreon account. You'll find it in the description box below. Thank you.